and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at the puzzle on the screen, which is called Imperfect Flower by Analytical Ninja. Now, I don't know much about this puzzle. Um, I know it defeat, well, I say I don't know much about it. I know it did defeat one of our testers. One of our testers did get through it and says it's absolutely brilliant, but quite difficult. And then I looked it up on Logic Masters Germany and I'm really none the wiser about how difficult it is. It's had 10 solves over there, but there, but it doesn't have a rating. So I can't, I can't really guide you as to exactly how tricky this is, but it's got a really cool rule set um, with a sort of continuous Renban line running around the shape of the flower. It's not a very imperfect flower either. I'm guessing it's an imperfect flower because of this, this line, you know, if, it, if this, if this line bent up to this cell, it would then be absolutely sort of four way symmetrical. Um, but this could be the stem, so it could still be quite a perfect flower. Um, anyway, we'll get to this in a moment. I have got loads of things to tell you about um, today. Let me start with an incredible performance by Mark so far in the World Sudoku Championship. Overnight, he was coming 20th, which is absolutely brilliant. I cannot tell you how impressed I am with how he's doing. Um, I think it does go to show that the two of us doing puzzles every day um, you know, it has, I suppose it, it is likely to make you better at solving Sudoku. And the last time there was actually a World Sudoku Championship, you know, um, was sort of in pre-COVID pre times. So there's been a lot of practice done in the in the meantime. And Mark's doing brilliantly. If, if he manages to, to finish anywhere like that, I know he will be delighted. I spoke to him last night. He could hardly believe it himself. Um, so, yeah, let's all let's all wish him well for the for the rest of the competition. It's going to end today. Um, next, I would like to give a shout out to Laura Kimlinger. Laura, it's just a shout out to say thank you for the lovely email. It did warm my heart. So, um, Laura, thanks for that. Um, next, some birthdays for you. Um, Garrett, you've turned 18 today, I believe. You've been watching for five years, which basically be, means you've been watching since the very beginning. Um, and your acquaintance, Jay. I thought you might appreciate a birthday shout out. So there you go. Hope you got lots and lots of cake, of course. Um, Jason, you've turned the big 5-0 today down there in Australia. I hope that you have a brilliant day. And Ryan, you've turned 15. And I know this because your brother Brandon wrote to us. And I know the two of you enjoy watching Crack and the Cryptid together, which sounds like a brilliant family activity. So congratulations on reaching the mighty age of 15. And... Um, I, I hope it's a ghetto filled day for you also. Um, next, I should shout out the Kickstarter, of course. This is this is the big thing we've got going on at the moment. If you want to get a copy of our new book, this is the book we're going to be making now. We are going to be making it because we have funded the basic amount of the book. Then please go over to Kickstarter and order yourselves a copy. The more of you do that, the better the book will be, the bigger we'll be able to make it and the more stuff we'll be able to include. We are very close now to having community um, chosen puzzles in the book as well, which is something we're really hopeful that we'll be able to do. Um, so there'll be a link on the screen and also under the video if you're interested in that. Um, next, we turn to patrons on, over on Patreon, and I need to read out names of successful solvers of the duality um, the duality monthly reward. There are only two days left to get in your answer. So if you want to shout out, you've got to, you've got to speed up. Um, Branford MD, Sampath Kumar, Niranjan Paranjapi, I think. Uh, Matthew Tad, I think that's Tad, not Todd. Matthew Tad, I think. Um, Michael or Mikhail Motzfeldt, um, Ewan McNeil, Nichko Philip. Now, Nichko Philip might be Philip Nichko, but I'm not sure. It did appear as Nichko Philip, so I'll go with that, but be prepared to be corrected. Um, Rick Lobb, VJ to Toko, I think, VJ Toko, um, Christy Klingert, Bartosz Staniov, Hamish Watt, Karina Jaeger, Martin Bull Gunderson, and Tobias Binder. All of you correctly identified the final 
uh, answer. Very well done to all of you. And I, I need to actually continue on the subject of patrons because we, it's, it's getting, well, it's just past the middle of the month and we want, we, we like, if we can, to do something extra for patrons each month. And we have something really rather special that we're going to be releasing hopefully later today if I get a chance to do it. Um, so it should all be, already be on patron, uh, uh, Patreon right now by the time this video goes out. Um, so it is another competition this time because we have been sent an extraordinary classic Sudoku that is the combined work of Jovial and Shy. Now, if you follow the channel for any amount of time, you will know that Jovial and Shy are they are just amazing so, uh, Sudoku setters, especially of classic Sudokus, and they've combined their wits to create what can only be described as one of the hardest and most interesting classic Sudokus I've ever seen. Um, it is an amazing puzzle, um, but it is absolutely blisteringly hard because it involves a sort of new idea that they've had. Um, the puzzle's called Another Language, and we are not we're, we're not going to be giving a, um, a prize for the first solution that we receive. We're going to be giving a prize for the best solution that we receive, the best explanation of what's going on, and um, that. The winner will be chosen by Jovial and Shy, so I'm going to send them the best answers we get, and they are going to choose the winner. Um, and yeah, I, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say anything else, um, but just be prepared to put your thinking caps on. Um, this is a really it's a really special thing. I love things like this. I think the last time we did it was for for a Philip Newman uh, brutally difficult puzzle. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's, I'm just going to be fascinated to see how many of you can understand what um, what these two incredible, <laughs> incredible setters have done with this classic Sudoku. So anyway, check, check that out. That's on Patreon right now. Um, now, all that said and done, let's get on with Imperfect Flower by Analytical Ninja and see, see what the ninja's got in store for us. The rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Every string of five consecutive cells along the continuous purple line must form a non-repeating consecutive set of digits. So that's this line, which you can see forms a loop. The three cell purple lines must each comprise a set of consecutive digits in any order. OK, so if this was a one, we would know that this was, you know, a one, two, three triple in some order. Um, so that's how the three cell Remban lines work. Um, cells separated by a black dot must have a one to two ratio, i.e. one digit must be double the other. So if this was an eight, that would have to be a four. Um, and then what else? Cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. So we've got a sprinkling, um, a sugar dusting of white dots in the grid. Um, so imagine that cell was a two. This cell would have to be a one or a three in order to be consecutive with two. That's all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And there's not a lot to go on here, is there? Um, I'm just pausing to think about the two black dots in the middle row, but I don't think that they are going to be terribly informative, at least early on. There are only six different digits you can put on black dots. Um, so one way to think about them is that you could never put five, seven and nine on them. But that's not going to actually reveal anything about their nature, I don't think. So it must be this enormous, great loopy thing. So we've got to understand what it means. So every string of five consecutive cells forms a non-repeating consecutive set of digits. So there's going to be some sort of looping going on here, isn't there? So what we should do, perhaps, should we just put in some numbers here? Five, I was, I was not trying to type that. I was just going to put some numbers along here. So if we make that seven, what have we got now? We've got five, six, seven, eight. Let's make that four. OK, so if this was the sequence of numbers, what would that number be? That would number. So that, OK, okay that would be a five, wouldn't it? 
because we would have dropped the 5 out of the sequence. So these are consecutive now. They're 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. If we drop the 5 out, we have to replace it there. Um, now, does that work the same way this way round? Not quite, actually. Right. OK, so there's a mod 5 thing going on, because if we look at this sequence, on the other hand, so if, let's say we're trying to work out what this digit is. You can see here we've got 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now, that means this square could be a 4. Absolutely. So it could be the same as this digit or it could be a 9 and make a sequence that way. And then we drop the 7 out, so then we'd have to replace the 7. And then we drop the 8 out, so we'd have to replace the 8. And then we drop the 6 out, so we'd have to replace the 6. And then again, this square would have to be 5, I think. But once the 9 drops out, this digit would be able to be 4 or 9. Right. Right, so how on earth do we pencil mark this? So basically, every for every time we go five cells from a... So let's say this is a starting cell. Let's say this is the starting cell of our sequence. When we go five more cells, so this cell could be yellow itself, or it could be five different from yellow. But it must be one of those things. So these, what we'll do is we'll label these yellow, and we'll say that those diff digits are either the same or they're five apart. And let's let's fill in some um, colors along here then. What should we make these? Uh, red, maybe? Should we deign to use purple today? Actually, I can see the purple against the purple line, so I might use purple and then green here. So, so now we know that well this cell must be blue in fact maybe maybe the better way to do this is going to be to continue along the line there and there those have got to be yellow and then blue comes after yellow on the line in every position red comes after um, blue purple comes after red and green must be the other ones so those are green now, now, so if we just go through the digits then, one pairs up with six, two pairs up with seven, three pairs up with eight, and four pairs up with nine, and five pairs up with nothing. But there must be a five as one of our digits, mustn't there? Because if we look at the, the slice of five digits, yellow to green. The, this slice must contain different digits because that's what the rules tell us. We have a, we, you know, we have a set of digit, five consecutive digits that aren't different but consecutive. So they're all different and if you slice five digits from the num numbers one to nine in order, how, wherever you take the slice you're always going to pick up a five. So there is a five definitely in one of those. Right, five is not red. <laughs> that is something I can tell you because five can't go on a black dot. So five is either, um, well, it's either purple, green, yellow, or blue. That is not going to butter any parsnips, is it? Oh, I wonder, is it something to do with the three cell Rembrandts then? Um, just wondering, because if like five was blue, say, then the three cell Rembrandts get a little bit, well, the problem is you don't know whether they're high or low, but whatever they were, they would be restricted. If that was a five, then this line, it could be from one, two, three, four, or it could be from six, seven, eight, nine, but it would have to have a very small subset of digits then. Oh, hang on. Reds are different across. Ah, OK. Ah, so red isn't 2, 7. Yeah, here's something. 
that these two diff di digits are different because they're in the same row of the Sudoku. But we know that if they are different, because they are the same colour, they're five apart. Well, therefore they can't be two seven because you can't put seven on a black dot and they can't be four nine either. So these are either one and six, that would work, but they're both black dotable digits, or three and eight. Ah, okay, I know what they are. This is really clever already. This is like really clever. Um, the reason I know what they are is how if, if they're if these are one and six, well those are one and six as well. But that means I've got to put two in one of those cells to be on a black dot with a one, because one of the digits is double the other, but the only digit that's consecutive with one is two, so there'd be a two in one of those cells as well. So this is not a one six pair. This is a three eight pair, which means these cells are three and eight, which means that Right, what goes on a black dot with 3 and 8? 6 and 4, I want to say. Which means that the 3 that must exist in one of these cells doesn't go with 4, it goes with 2. So there's definitely a 2 in one of these cells. And the 8 goes with 7 or 9. So these are 2, 7 or 9. But this... Well, this is, this is a bit magical, isn't it? It really is... It's cunning. Right, now what do we need across the middle then now? We need one, two, one, two, five, seven, and nine. But that's not two, because we know there's a two in one of those. So this is one, five, seven, or nine. Yeah, okay, and this is where it's going to get very awkward indeed, because I was just wondering if I could therefore label up blue with this coterie of digits, but I can't because blue, it's not, yeah, this is where I'm going to get into trouble with my brain. Brain, you're giving me trouble, because normally when I solve Sudoku with colours, I... I'm saying that blue is the same digit. So what I was doing there was I think, oh, blue's the same digit. So, and in fact, it might be even better. Yeah, so in fact, if, we, if, if all of the blues were the same digit, that would have to be blue. But here, because there would be four blues looking at box five, but here, because blue is digits that could be five apart, there's no necessity for those two to be the same or for these two to be the same. So they so working out the Sudoku implications of blue on the middle box is rather more well opaque, certainly tricky. Right. Okay, so what do we do next? That white dot looks interesting to me. Because this sort of internal digit to the flower, if we just study that digit for a moment, it cannot be red, blue. Oh, no, 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 you're doing this wrong again. Well, I mean, it's true to say that whatever is in that, whatever is in those cells is not in this cell. Because by Sudoku it can't be, but because we don't know. Oh, this is weird. Just, uh, because I don't, I, because I don't know what's in these cells. I can't quite, or in my brain, it doesn't want to treat them the normal way. But it is. I mean, it's at least a little bit interesting that that digit there will see the whole of that run of digits, whatever that happens to be. Ah, yeah, okay, so if that's 3 and that's 8. Then, 
that will have to be the digits between three and eight. Ah, yeah, okay. So if that's if that's three and that's eight, then to connect to connect these to together to say that that sequence when you drop the three out you can just attach it to the eight that's going to have to be four five six and seven and that doesn't work does it here what what could that be Oh, but I tell you what, no, no, well, it's true it doesn't work. It is true it doesn't work. Oh, right, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I'm being the world's most inarticulate man here. Um, so that's, t ah, right, 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 right. So that's telling us that those digits are the same digit, is it? If these can't be different, yeah, because it would be the same. If that was 8 and that was 3, I'd still have to put 4, 5, 6, 7 into this quadruple. And this digit, I think, is impossible. And sorry, I didn't really explain why that's impossible. But I was just trying to work out what could be consecutive with the digit I put in yellow and exist in this cell. And the answer is nothing. Because, because this is an internal digit to the sequence between 3 and 8. So this cell sees 3 and 8, and it sees all of the internal digits as well. So there's no way of putting a consecutive digit to 4, 5, 6, or 7 in this cell, and it not seeing itself. You, know, you can prove that. If, you, if we put 5 in there, what are you going to put here? It has got to be 4 or 6, but there's going to be a 4 or 6 in that triple. If you put 7 in here and think, ah, I can escape from the 4, 5, 6, 7 deadliness, well, you can't because you could put the 8 in there, but there will be an 8 in one of those to bind the sequence. So that tells us something. It tells us I've got this completely wrong. It tells us that these two cells are not capable of being different. So they are the same, which means they're either double 3 or they're double 8. Ah, ah, <laughs> right. So that means if these have to be the same, and they do, because otherwise this breaks, those have to be different. That must be right. So, because whatever this is, let's just label, let's label this with letters. Um, this digit here and this digit here are the same. Don't know what that digit is. I know it's three or eight, but I don't know what it is. And that means by Sudoku, these two digits are not A. So these two digits are B. That means these two digits are different. But if this is 3 and 8, these digits are the digits between 3 and 8 in order to make the Renban work or the continuous sequence work. So that's 4, 5, 6 and 7. And the same is true here. This is B, this is A. So this is 4, 5, 6 and 7. This already has the feel of one of those puzzles that's just a stone-cold classic, doesn't it? It feels completely magical that you can start to fill this in. Um, now, 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 now it looks to me like purple and blue are troubled. Because these options are not five apart from each other. You know, if that's seven, that can't be five away from seven. So what that's telling us is that those two digits are actually the same digit, and those two digits are actually the same digit. Now, it would be really rather nice if that had less options. Oh, OK, I can get rid of 4 from these two. Because they're the same, they can't be 4, because I can't put 4 in there. So they're not 4. And they're not 6 either for the same reason. So we've got blue down to 5 or 7. And that means that those have got to be 5 or 7. Ah. Uh. 
does that mean that well that means that th doesn't that mean that that's blue oh this is doing my head in now I think it does I mean blue if blue has to be five or seven I think that logic I'm just going to unwind a bit I'm just slightly troubled I'm, I'm not it's the whole business that these these digits are not necessarily the same but the, the, but they for them to be different they have to be five apart because of the logic on on the five on, on the on the flower and they can't be five apart so they are the same so if they're the same they have to go in there in the middle box and they can't be four or six yeah, that, I think that's right I think that's right now now the options for blue are fives and sevens. Well, that, they're clearly all the same digit then, which means that digit is blue by Sudoku, which means it is not one or nine. So the middle digit of the puzzle is five or seven. Um... Okay. So does that mean that purple cannot be five or seven? I think it does because we can see these two digits here are also not capable from our pencil marking of being five apart from one another. So they are the same digit which means that this this digit, whatever it is, is in one of those three cells. Now, it can't be in the middle because blue is in the middle and this, this purple digit sees blue. So it must be in one of those squares, which means that digit is four or six. And it corresponds to that. Well, okay, but that means that that digit is four or six because that's the purple. Oh. Oh, right. Okay, I thought I'd broken the puzzle then, but I haven't, have I? This is so weird. This is so weird. I bet you can all see what's going on, but it's taking my brain a while to catch up with this. Right. It is true to say that those digits are four or six. That is true. And it it is true sort of to say these two digits are four or six, but not quite, that's not quite enough. And the reason I realize it's not quite enough is that I was looking at this thinking, well, where can I put this digit in here? But the point is that these have to be from the same modulus as these, not necessarily the same digit. In other words, they have to be, these could be five apart from the four and the six here. And indeed, we can see one of them must be. If all four of these digits were the same, that would imply that purple was blue. And that clearly seems to be impossible from the numbers option, the, the options we've got and the fact that blue and purple see each other. So, so these are the same because they, they are from the four, five, six, seven quadruples one of these at least is not whatever these digits are. Which means that the options for these squares need to be extended. So four, four can go with nine and six can go with one. And therefore, well, therefore, I mean, these can actually be different as well. These don't have to be the same. At least I don't think they do. But they now, they now could be the same. If these were both nine, one of those could be nine and that would be okay. Although actually, no, they can't both be nine. They can't both be nine because if they were both nine, one of them would be next to th a three on a Ren ban. And a three and nine can't connect within five digits to each other. But how high can three go? Three, four, five, six. three can only get to seven. Three can only get to seven. 
so mm, okay but eight can get to nine e well, very easily eight can't get to one eight can get to four I think yeah eight can get to four so hmm Oh dear, <laughs> I'm trying, I can feel my brain giving, you know, it's like going, it's like a motor that's been, it's overheated. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Can I... If that digit, I'm wondering if I can use my dot again here. If this digit is a one, that has to be a three. And we know it's the same as that. So if that digit's a one, that's a three. And in fact, well, if it's a one, we know the sequence must be two. Well, we know that would then have to be that is it. Yeah, hang on. If that's a 1, that's a 3. That has to be 5 now, doesn't it? Because it can't be 7 and be in a 5-cell sequence with a 1. So that would have to be 5. We know all the blues are the same. So this would have to be a 2-4 pair to make that sequence consecutive. Do we get the same internal problem with this then? We do. That doesn't work. That doesn't work because this, because of the magic this white dot performs. Again, if this is two or four in a sequence of one to five, you can't put anything that's consecutive with two or four into this cell without it seeing uh, itself in this sort of funny cross shape. But that all presumed that this... Well, okay, now that does mean we can take one out of here because one cannot go with eight. So that just simply cannot be one. And I bet you that symmetrical. If we go with nine here, that then has to be eight. So that's that sequence then would have to have a six, seven pair here. Oh, hang on. But if I go with nine here, no, that's wrong because this might not be five then. Right, sorry. So if that goes with 9, that's got to be 8. That's got to be 8. Now this could be 7 or it could be 5. Now if it's 7, these would be... Ah, that, that lets the pressure off. I don't believe it. This is very, it's very clever, but very hard to understand. The problem here is if that's 7... Now these can be um, 6 and 5, and they would have to be 6 and 5 to make this sequence consecutive. But if we put the 5 here rather than the 6, we can escape with a 4. Oh no, then that breaks. Oh, so it still doesn't work. It still doesn't work. Okay, so that, that's, that's off the table as well. I thought I was going to be able to get out of jail by putting the, the extreme digit from the sequence into this and then going, da-da, that one could be okay. But it, it sees itself there, I think. Well, no, I mean, it, well, the effect of this is to rule out any digits at all from that cell, which is obviously not the idea of the puzzle. So this is not nine. So this is four or six. Right, okay, well, this is interesting. This is interesting because now, if we look at those digits, they have to be the same modulus. Because, so, so they're either all fours or they're all sixes. We can't have one being a four and one being a six because the, the four and six are not five apart. Now that means this little digit here is different from four or six because if it was the same as its friends, we've already looked at this, you couldn't put it in the middle box anywhere. So that digit is one or nine now. Oh, and that's so annoying because that, that well, you know, if it's nine, that, yeah, that's going to be eight and so is that. But there's nothing over here. If that's three, this is going to be one. 
three, one, that would be five. That would be a two, four pair. And if this is eight and nine, we've got no white dot problem, have we? Or maybe the white dot problem comes in. No, because <laughs> because this is the one or the nine. Yeah, so this is where the symmetry, well, the lack of a dot here puts this digit under no pressure. Okay, all right, this is, this is seriously clever. This might be too clever for me. Um, what is it that I'm meant to be understanding? I'm so, I sort of feel like I'm gradually iterating towards understanding how this line works. But, but, what was it that failed down here? It was nine eight, wasn't it? This it was this being a nine. Um, let me just have a think about. Let's just double click on the blue digits and think about Sudoku for a moment or two. Is there a problem? Yeah, okay. What about where where does blue go in box nine? You can't put it on the black dot, look. Whether it's five or seven, it simply cannot go on a black dot. So one of those cells is blue. Which means one of these cells is blue. That's I don't think gonna help us out, is it? What about no, it's not. It's not. Oh, that that felt for a moment quite quite hopeful, and then analytical ninja, ninja dashed our hopes on the rocks of despair. Um, what is it then? Is it these three cell lines? I don't I really don't want to look at the three cell lines. Oh, hang on. I said before, if those are fives, then I know that this is. Hang on, if that's five, do I know what that is? The answer to that is no. So I don't think I know what goes on the line. If that's seven, do I know this is eight? No, uh, no I don't actually. Three and five, three and seven can connect, can't they? with four, five, and six in the other positions. So, well, that wouldn't work up there because that can't be that. So if that's seven, that would have to be eight. That would have to be nine. This would have to be a five, six pair. But that looks probably okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. What is it then? What am I missing here? Problem is, especially around these parts of the petals. I don't have a good handle at all on what those digits can be. And I think the fact is they, they don't even have to correspond exactly to yellow and green. Oh, and they don't have to correspond at all, do they? They, they just have to be five. They could either be whatever's in that cell or five different. So how do I do this? That is the challenge that we face. Um, do we know? Oh, oh I see. Oh, 
Oh, it's... Oh. Oh, it's obvious. Oh, my goodness me. It's obvious and it's pretty. It's pretty as a picture. Oh, Simon, you are so unbelievably slow sometimes. Right. Right. Blue is not seven. Blue is not seven. And that is, it's for a lovely reason. It really is. And the reason blue is not seven is if blue is seven, one of the digits it's paired with, I don't know which one, but if blue is seven, if we make both of those digits seven, one of these digits is a three. I don't know which one it is, but it doesn't matter. Let's make it this one. If that's a three, because A and B are different, one of them must be a three, how do you fill this line? It's a three cell line that can't that has to be a four, five, six line because it needs to be three consecutive digits. And when you put three and seven here, you can't use eights, nines, or ones and twos on the line anymore. So it's forced to be four, five, six, and it's gonna break purple. And that's gonna be exactly the same if this was the three, it's gonna break purple again. Ah, uh, that's, that's been staring us in the face, I think. Well, that's great though. It gets us a digit after 41 minutes. Uh, well, okay, let's, let's put five in to those cells and five pencil marks in to the the blue the blue flashing cells that we've got and now okay so now we can take five out of these cells we can take five out of these cells because we we know that we've got the five in that sequence so now there's a seven look in the corner boxes because this can't be seven and and for our next trick we will say that what are we going to say Okay, I am going to say that is not, that's definitely not a one. Ah, <laughs> this, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. It's starting to become clearer. That's not a one, because if that's a one, that sequence has now become absolutely broken because there's a seven in it. And seven and one don't connect. I might be able to connect three with seven, but I definitely can't connect one with seven in five cells. Um, so that cell has become a nine. Now that means that that must surely be eight <laughs> because three and I'm questioning everything in my head. No, three can only get to seven. It can't get to eight or nine. So, so, so that digit cannot be three. It cannot be in a five cell sequence with a nine. So that's eight and that's B. So now we've got, well, we've got B, which means we've got A. And it means that, look, to connect those in a sequence, that is a 6-7 pair. Which means these must be not 4. Yes, okay, the, the, uh, the, yes, that, that is certainly true. And I was seeing it by thinking about the nature of green and yellow, but I could have seen it more, more simply probably by just thinking about the nature of purple. As soon as we know that purple is 9, we know these digits have to be mod 5, don't they? They have got to be 5 away from 9, so they're not 6s anymore, so all of these are 4s. Um, which means these can't be 4s, these can't be 4s, because there would be two 4s in this stretch of digits, which is not allowed. So we've got 6, 7 pairs everywhere, which are sort of, yeah, so they're off, offset. And we're going to have to work out what these two digits are, I think. Um, oh, no, simpler than that. I'm going to do my black dots. So that's got to be six. That's got to be eight. Oh, not eight, four. Did I have, for some reason, I thought I had an eight pencil marked in there, but that was just me and my new glasses getting used to each other. That's three, so that's two. So this is seven or nine. And... 
yeah I think I've made this puzzle more difficult than it actually is I think I think once you get your head around it it's not too bad to understand how it how it sort of fits together now aren't I going to have a maybe I'm not going to have a massive deadly pattern I was thinking about whether I could make these well I can I can pencil mark these actually now because they're either six and seven or they're the mod or they're five different from six or seven which would include one and two so these are one two six or seven so what can that digit actually be um good question unfortunately i think it's got many answers if that's seven that becomes six which means that this would have to be eight because it needs to be consecutive with seven and can't be six and that looks i quite like the look of that the eight has escaped from the four three five trap so okay so one option here is eight if this is six i think it's much more difficult to make it work yeah that doesn't work right if this is six that then is seven by sudoku and what are we going to put in there it needs to be five or seven to be consecutive with six we've got a seven in the row and a five in the row so that's not six this is not going to be able to be one either is it he says no it can't be one because then that has to be two yeah if that's a one this sequence here needs to have a two in it to be consecutive so that's going to be the two and that but that needs to be two to be consecutive with one so that doesn't work so now we've learned yeah we've got it we've got it because now we know that yellow is either two or seven but we know these yellows are either six or seven well the only digit that corresponds there is seven so these digits are all seven green is all six which means this green is not two or seven anymore it's from the one six version of, of, of affairs ah now hang on we need to work out what this can be does this have to be seven now or could it be to still be two if that's two uh, that can't be three this would have to be one Hmm, actually that might be possible what I'm thinking is if that's two and that's six two three four five six that is a sequence that's a sequence yeah so because I don't have to make this one I think we escape again that's annoying so we don't know or at least I don't think we know how this tidies up if that's one no hang on hang on how could that be one then that would be six and that would be seven and seven is not consecutive with one no there's something wrong here there's something wrong with my analysis if that's two if that's two or maybe maybe it's just that this is not able to be one maybe that's the point maybe this has to be eight no no i'm talking nonsense if that's one that's two and that's six the world is the world is a sensible place No, okay, sorry. I, d I thought there must be a way of breaking this, but I don't think there is. If that's one, that has to be two. No, that doesn't work. And maybe that's it then. Maybe this is always six. It felt like there was some problem down here. And I think it's this being a one that's a problem. Although it could be a one in theory because it's green. So it could be five different from six. Were it to be five different from six this sequence now requires this to be a two but then that for that can't be one or three so it has no option okay all right so we do learn something we learn that six but alas i think seven is possible here that would be a sequence this would be a sequence eight allows an escape and two also allows an escape if that becomes a one 
So very weirdly, this dot is not finished. But, but surely now we can use our three cell REM bands, he says, thinking, well, yeah, actually I can. I can. What about that one even? That can't be one, two, three now. So we're, we're, we're picking from the digits six, seven, eight and nine to go on this line. Um, that's not six or seven. This line's got to have on it seven and eight, hasn't it? Which means that cell's not eight. <laughs> That's not seven. Oh dear. Dear, dear, dear. Okay, all right. So that's not done it. That's not nine by Sudoku. No, okay. All right. So this this was not where we meant to look. Let's try this one. Um, this is okay. Well, this is good. Oh, that's a one, two, three, triple. This is better. Right. So this is a three cell sequence. Now, there are not three digits between five and eight. There's only six and seven. So we're not looking at high digits here and we need to be below four. So this has got to be one, two, three. And that's not three by Sudoku. So this is not one or two now. Oh, in fact, look, this, this digit's done. It's, an, it's just a nine by, by Sudoku. It's C7 and it's C6. So that's a nine. We get rid of nines over here. We've got those two squares are, oh, they're six and seven. Okay, I could have seen that from, from the, the yellowing and the, the greening. So this black dot, no, this black dot's not three, six. It's not one, two. Ah, there's a four on this black dot. So it's either two, four or four, eight. It's got to have four on it um, because it can't be a one and a two. And it can't be a six and a three. So it's got to be selected from two, four and eight, the other three possible black dot digits. So there's a four up here, which is looking very much like it wants to go with a five on the white dot, isn't it? Um, oh, and I can just place three in this box by Sudoku because there's a three in one of those two squares and therefore three in this box goes not in the exact corner, but it goes there. So there's a three in one of these two cells. Um, so this column now is only without its ones, twos and nines. And that's very important. That can't be nine. For the following reason, right brain, catch up with mouth. Come on. Um, Bar humbug. Don't know. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. We need low digits on this one. So we're looking at, looking at one, twos, threes and fours. That's not two or three look um, by Sudoku. There's got to be. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That is nice. So this line here is selected from ones, twos, threes and fours, but it must therefore have two and three on it in order to be a consecutive sequence. And that can't be two or three. So that is a two, three pair out of absolutely nowhere. Which means that, right, what are the other digits I've got to put in here then? One, four. Ah, six and seven, isn't it? So that's right. So this is a one, four pair. Oh, it's the same thing again. We've got like a six, seven pair here. Oh, which I can resolve this time. I've got a six here, right. So I get six here, seven here. Six is a green digits, aren't they? Maybe that's gonna help me to spot things. Sevens are yellow digits. Um, right, is this doing something? That's not six anymore. And this column needs six, seven and nine. So, ah, this is good. This is good. Right, this has to be six, seven or nine. But remember this string of digits is from six, seven, eight and nine. So it must have seven and eight on it. So that's not able to be seven. This is six or nine. This is a quadruple, which means those two squares are one and two. Oh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, hmm. I don't see how to resolve that. Can I get this digit now? No. I'm hold, holding out a lot of hope for the hero th three cell Remban over here. Otherwise, I'm completely flummoxed. Okay. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, I was just thinking as well. I've I've highlighted a load of digits in yellow, haven't I? On the basis that there's seven, but that could be a two still. And I need to be really careful still with my highlighting. Three. Ah, okay, let's look a little bit about where three goes in this box. I think it has to be in one of those two positions. Now, can it be on this? No, it can be on the dot. We can go with four or two. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I was hoping I was going to be able to improve on matters there, but I can't. Um, so let's well let's look at this dot then what what can we do with this one right this is not ah this is a seven yeah that must be right this is a three cell sequence but there's a three here so this can't have one or two on it that is just a seven it's a gimme oh it's got no oh this is lovely it's not got a six on it but by sudoku so this is seven eight nine i think Somehow that's not resolved anything. How? That's that's just mischievous. Um, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And that is why you fail. Um, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Is this? Has this done something good? Uh, Seven. Oh, it has. No. All right. I understand. I've got it. I've got it. Sudoku. When in doubt, try Sudoku. This line has a seven on it. Combine it with that seven. There's a seven in one of those two places in box seven. And now I've just ruled out that one. So that gets me my final position of seven, which can't be consecutive with one. So that's become an eight. There's an eight in one of those two cells by Sudoku using the fact there's an eight in one of these two cells. This row needs ones, twos, and nines. Look. Now, can we rule anything out from that? Nah, I don't know. Um, all right. Can we? Oh, that's a six, so that's a nine. Hang on, that's been a well, that's a bit of Sudoku we can do. So that's become an eight, which means that's a seven, that's a six. Here we go, here we go, we've done it. Have we done it? Maybe. I've got a seven here, so that's a seven, that's a six. That's a six by Sudoku. I feel like I'm getting a lot of ones and twos appearing in the grid. We might have to color our ones and twos in a moment. But I'm very happy to do that if I get this puzzle solved. Um, come on, Simon. What? Okay, what else can I do as a result of all those digits I just put in down here? I can get rid of eight from this cell. So that's just two or four now. Sixes are green, aren't they? Sevens are yellow. I think sevens. Sevens are just yellow. Have I done all the seven? I've done all the sevens. Okay. Have I done all the sixes? Um, no. Oh, yes, I have. If I highlight them all, I will find I've done them all. Um, Okie dokie. So what is it? What is it I've got to do now? Is it maybe this column? One, two, and uh, it's one, two, and nine again. I feel like that's happened before. That's not nine. Oh, look, I've got a one, two pair in this row. So what else? Are, I haven't got three and four in this row. So that's a three or a four. But I seem to think there's a four. Oh, yes, I see what's happening here. I seem to think there's a four up there because remember, there's a black dot down here. 
that means that cell's a 3, which means that's not a 3, which means this is a 4 over here. So 4 is in one of those two places. And that means... I don't know. I still don't know what anything means. I've got two unused white dots, haven't I? So I think it must be something to do with those. Although what that is, is far from clear. Can I put four on this one? Not with three. It would have to go with five into this position. Why can't that be a five? Ah. It is this one. It's this one for a very pretty reason indeed. I can tell you something. There's a secret about white dots. A white dot has an even digit on it always and an odd digit on it because it's a consecutive pair of digits. Now, I've used six and eight in this box. So this either has two on it or it has four on it. But if it has two on it, it can't have three on it to accompany the two. So it's going to have to be a one, two pair and that's going to break that cell. So there is a four on this dot and I know where it goes. So that's four. This is now five because it can't be three. Which means there's a five in one of those two cells by Sudoku. This has become a five. Feels a long time ago I put this pencil mark or this colored flash in. Um, this four gives me a digit here. That's now a four. So we've got a two or an eight in the corner. Oh, no, it's still still being difficult, isn't it? It's not completely resolved yet. One, two, three, and nine. It's still, it really isn't still completely resolved. We still might have to do a lot of spot of colouring, I think. Let's think about this now. Can we perform some sort of magic? Or do we have to colour? Nine? Two? Oh. Sorry if you're all seeing how to resolve this. I just am not. I think I'm going to uncolour this purple. Because I can then colour my fours the same colour. So I think everything else I've coloured in one colour. So let's make that nine orange instead. And then we can purplify this. And now I can double click my fours and make them all purple. And just let me stare at that for a moment and see if that sheds any light on anything. Which it doesn't seem to want to. Right, nines we're saying are orange now. I've only got two nines, I suddenly realised. Okay, so there's a nine in one of these two. Oh no, that's another nine. Why didn't that highlight when I double clicked it? I don't know. Oh, and my threes and eights suddenly realized are different colors as well. So I have to fix that. Have we got any? I've got a three here. That's red. I've got a three here. That's red. Ah, so maybe there's something going on with threes. Oh, my phone is buzzing at me. Um, oh, that could be a message from Mark, actually. Um, hang on, let me just check. He finished 19th in the World Championship. That is absolutely brilliant. What a performance that is. Well done to him. That is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. He will be thrilled with that. Um, Wow, wow. Anyway, get your head in the game. I mean, you haven't finished this puzzle yet. Um, okay, it's going to be this dot somehow, isn't it? What is this dot doing? Is it, is it something to do with... Right, this square... Oh, it's where does 9 go in the bottom row? It can only go there by Sudoku. Of course, it's always going to be Sudoku, wasn't it? So that's a 9. Mark's text interruption has actually helped me. There's now a nine in one of these two cells. Is that useful? This is one, two, or eight. So there's an eight in one of those two cells. This is a one, two pair up here. 
So is that somehow meant to be telling me? Yeah, okay. Maybe it's a similar trick again in terms of what either the even or odd digit is on this. It's not it's not one now because that would break this. It's not three, it's not seven. It could be five if it goes with four. Or it's got to be nine and eight. Nine would have to go here, this would have to be eight. Why can't that be a nine eight pair? The answer is I don't know. I'm afraid. I'm not sure. There's a three in one of these. So three oh I could get a three in the corner. That could be a three. I think I'm gonna to have to do more pencil marking, I'm afraid. So look at this column. We've got six digits effectively. We need threes, eights, and nines into the balance. Oh, hang on, that's a naked single then. Yeah, okay, so it, I think it is just Sudoku at this point that's that's proving tricky. Um, we can get rid of the eight pencil marks. So if this is eight, nine, three in this box now, has to go there, which is sho shoving the five here. Ah, and that's putting five in the corner, which I feel like it just has a song. So that's got to go with not six, that's got to go with four, which gets me the four and the one in these cells, the one and the two in these cells. So I might not have to color my ones and twos. That's a nine now, looking at pencil marking. What are those two digits then? They are one, two, and eight. Let's just put that in and see if we can see how it's, well, they're not two because I've got two in one of those. So this is two, this is one, this is one, this is two. What have we not put in here? One and two, hopefully. Oh no, hang on, I made a mistake. Don't like the look of that. No, it is one and two. I just put them in the wrong order somehow. That's two, that's one. That's two, that's one. So this is one. This is one. This is eight. This is eight. This is two. This is three. This is two. Good grief. This is two. This is three. This, yeah, it's done, isn't it? It's done. It's falling now. Eight and nine go in. We just have to figure out this middle box. One and eight yes three there nine here and then nine and the eight go in good grief right let's double click some things and see if we can tidy up our uh eights i was awarding gray wasn't i threes that meant to be red um did two ever get a color are all the twos white no are all the ones white I think so and then four oh four did get a color four was meant to be purple so we should just oh five got a color that was blue so it should just be ones and twos and if we click tick yes oh my goodness that is that's a well it's an incredibly beautiful puzzle I mean look at the flower now redolent in its uh, in its chromatic splendor um, that was really clever um, I think there might be better ways of a pro I'm wondering whether I would have been better not not doing my coloring the way I did it with with the sort of the two options applying to colors because that threw me no I mean I kept on struggling with the fact that you know a color digit could be one of two things um, so there might be a better way of pencil marking this one that would have um, got you th or got me through it more quickly. I look forward to the comments and how he, you know, whether this puzzle is really challenging or whether it's it's susceptible to a slightly different technical approach. Um, but I loved it. It's absolutely great. Again, uh, analytical ninja, take a bow. We are on a, such a run of puzzles again, aren't we? And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.